Uh oh, Houston, we might have a problem. So today we're working close at home. I kind of enjoy that. Right down the way, two houses down, our neighbor Eric hired us to work on his Honda outboard and we're going to uh, pull a full service on that. So let's go get started. Well, let's see what we've got going on here. We've got two sheared off bolts. One, that's not a big deal. This one, this just held this in. So that's not the end of the world. This, I'm gonna have to see if I can get that out of there. And this is not gonna be good. It's not gonna be pretty, I can tell you that much. So first, let me see if I can get this lower unit off of here. Try a little persuasion, see what happens. Oh, there it goes. That's good news. Oh, Eric was right, this has never been serviced. I can tell because of the way this cotter pin is bent. It's They bent them a fancy way at the factory and it's in perfect condition. There we go. Cut that out. Yeah. So I'm guessing the bolts are all out. There we go. So now that I got this off, so let me back up. So here's the deal with this. Oh, it's very low hours because he doesn't use it very often but it's also never been serviced because it's such slow hours, but it's, I forget how many years old it is, but the problem now is everything's corroded and I've got two bolts that are sheared off. One is not any big deal. It's just a plastic cover, but then one of them is one of the mount bolts for this lower unit. I'm gonna have to try to get off. And I'll show you what was stuck after I set this down. So this thing right here, this spline, that's the shift spline. And it goes up inside, a, up in here, in this little tube. And you can see it was all corroded and stuck. So we just had to work on it. And there is my broken off bolt. I'm going to shock peen that a couple times. And then I'm gonna heat it. And I'm gonna put my vice grips on it, see if it budges. If it doesn't budge, then we will maybe grind it square and drive a socket on it or something and see if we can get it off that way. What ideas do you guys have besides what I just said? And just because I'm using some fire, so I have map gas in here. I don't know if you guys can see in those holes, but the holes are all full of salt. Let's see what happens here. I don't think it's coming. All I'm doing is stripping metal off. All right, so what I'm gonna have to do, I, I'll probably take the machine shop because what they can do is grind this flush and then put it on a machine and mill that out. I'm just looking at what I need to do to take this off. It can't be just as easy as having these two bolts come off right here and here. It can't be that easy. Yeah, I'm just gonna have to take that spacer apart that's the part where the bolt's broken off in and take it to the machine shop because the bolt holes are all full of salt and so it corroded and of course i left my ratchet in my truck so let's see if we can make this work i'm gonna have to go get the tool i gotta run to home depot i was over here on the coast guard sector and there's something that's i've been interested in i've seen it several times but i thought i'd share it with you guys so this is the barracks and if you look here how high the water gets. So on a Cat 2 storm, that's six to eight feet right there above sea level. 1964, eight feet. Wilma, 2005, eight feet. That's a category three is nine to 12 feet. Then Gracie, 1959 was 12 feet. Category four is 13 to 18 feet. Andrew in 92 was 17 feet. That's 18 feet and over for a category five. The Hugo in 89 was 20 feet over. And if you look way up there, I don't know if you guys will be able to see it, but it says Labor Day Storm 1935, Cat 5, 26 feet. Also Camille 1969, Category 5, 26 feet. There used to be another sign up there. It must have came down, but it used to say 33 feet, 
and I think that was a hurricane back in the 1800s. I would have to research that to find out. But just wanted to show you guys that while I was over here to look at a uh, Coast Guard job. And uh, I think it's pretty interesting and it's actually pretty damn scary <laughs> how high the water can get with these storms. Thankfully, we haven't had one in a long time. Let's hope that keeps up. Whose show is it today? It's, it's Chris's AJ's show. It's Chris's show. Nice. So tell me what you're doing there, big guy. I'm screwing bolts. So we're here on this boat that uh, we have been working on for a little bit. You can see that AJ's pulling our replacement part. This is actually the DC converter inside of one of the AC-12's AC systems that takes the shore power, balances the load, and provides good, safe shore power to the entire boat. It is quite heavy. So we have a few strong, able men here today to help us get it installed. So once we get that, we got to bring it down here into the engine room. It's kind of loud because we have the generator running so we can maintain shore power while we work because we have no shore power. These are the two AC power systems. Their models are the AC-12s. Originally we came here because this one was faulting out. Uh, we went through all of the factory resets and everything just to make sure it wasn't bolted out due to a uh, power spike or something like that. Couldn't get the fault to clear, so as we started troubleshooting it, we actually took this whole panel apart, and there's a bunch of test points along here. We'll show you once we get this open. Did the test points, all of the test points led to the DC module in here being bad. So we are gonna replace that today and hopefully get this up and running so they can have both of these working in parallel together to make good power throughout the ship. Because right now with this one off, and then this one set to the main one, uh, we're only able to draw about 50 amps. If you both of these together, you'll be able to get roughly 100 amps. The other problems before this faulted out is the owners were not around. There was a couple of power spikes and bad power and it fried out the one module that we're replacing today. But unfortunately, when that kicked off, it killed short power to the phone. Their inverters were set to the default to kick on and take over and provide the 110 volts to just part of the panel there. So while they were gone, the inverters kicked on. And then they started providing 110. And of course, you guys know, an inverter off of battery providing 110. Plus, you got a huge bank, doesn't last very long. And they had a decent sized bank, but not long enough. So they lost all power to the phone. They lost the refrigerator, everything inside there went bad. So that was kind of a, a bad situation. But when we showed up to troubleshoot the problem, we couldn't get any of the power to kick back on or trip over do anything because the switching circuit actually relied on 12 volts from the battery to kick on and because the inverter drained all of it, it, it took a lot of using an external battery to charge the house batteries using an extension cord off of the pier. Once we got that, those charged, then the inverter would turn back on and we switched the inverter to be back to manual and then from there, we're able to get these to turn on. Once these were able to turn on, we were able to program that port one so it would just be a standalone and then start providing 240. And then once we got the 240 back to the fault, then everything got power and everything started working and recharging as it would. And on top of that, we were trying to run the generator like it's running right now to provide power. But when we went to go start it up, it had a major water leak to it. Uh, it was definitely one of those worst case scenarios that they lost power and because your generator maintenance wasn't up to par, we were just kind of in a sticky situation. So let me know if that's ever happened to y'all. Once we got the panel off, this circuit board and everything that is attached behind it is going to get replaced today. So that's what we're working on. So that was just the front of it, but the actual meat and potatoes of it is all of this that has to get replaced it's been a little bit so my numbers might be a little off but these four connectors this is the dc side this is the ac side they are both supposed to have positive 20 volts negative 20 volts ac positive 20 volts negative 20 volts dc this side was one volt this side was one volt 
and then with the entire system completely de-energized, the resistance was too low here and on this side here. And all of that led to all of the big components in here being bad. And unfortunately, they don't sell just replacement components. They sell this whole thing as one. So now that we've got it open and we've got a game plan, we're going to get the old one out and get this one in. I gotta run to Home Depot and pick up a tool because my truck is in the shop and all my tools are in there. I have a tool box in my garage, but for some reason, the ratchet's missing. So I'm just gonna go buy one quick and put it back in the bag when I'm done. That way it's in there for next time I need it. Pretty handy living right next door to Home Depot. Yeah, you know, what do you guys use to organize your sockets? Oh, this, hang on, for 10 more dollars, I can get 144 position, which is real nice. That's worth it to me. All right, let's go. All right, so we got the top circuit board off. We got the part exposed. And uh, that is what we actually had to take out. So we got that top piece off, disconnected, and then now we have access to this. So on the outside, it looks like that. On the inside, it looks like this. Science. Before, after. So we ended up getting the unit out. It was definitely a pain, but what we found is there's actually six wires that come out of here. While we were probing around and whatnot, this one actually came out of its terminal, which is no big deal. I think it's just because we kind of got it caught and pulled on it a bit, but we're just gonna get another highlight clip it to the wire and then reinstall it before we put the actual DC module back in here. But taking it out, we had to take the top off. The main reason why we had to take the top off is because some of the components sat higher than what this shelf that was here. So just simply sliding it out, they would have gotten caught. So we had to take this off which meant a lot of labeling and disconnecting and a lot of time and patience to make sure that everything goes back properly. Now, what we were kind of fearing is on the replacement one, there's actually two feet on each side, two here and two here that it sits on and screws in. We were fearful that it was screwed in down here. And if that was the case, it was gonna be impossible with it in to get there because of components in the way and whatnot. As we started probing around, what we found is that it actually uses three points of contact, uh, four, I guess, a foot and a foot here with four screws total. And then there's just an L bracket that slides up underneath this slide right here. And it just slides right in there. Point of contact, point of contact, and two point of contacts here. So I needed four screws and then it just needed to slide. And you can actually see the old salt residue builds up and dust. I have a feeling because that looks like uh, maybe an electrical component inside that DC converter blew up. I can guess what that residue is. Because if it's salt, then there's a whole other issue going on. So that's where we're at right now. Let me know what you guys think. Before we put the cover on, we're going to give it a test. Okay, short power is on. Short one, short power two. All right. On. Converter on. Converter power on. Input online. Status okay. Let's hope I don't break off any more bolts, right? Man, they're all full of salt. I don't know if you guys can see all that powder that's falling out of there. See all that white stuff? It's all corrosion byproduct. That should come out when this comes off. What else? I think I'm gonna have to take these off. I haven't got to work with you for a long time. Yeah, it's nice when you get to work with the boss lady. So when we put this back together, we are definitely gonna put uh, either Tef gel or marine grease all over these bolts. I'm gonna have to probably get a couple new ones. Thankfully, these all seem to be coming off okay. See all that stuff on there? If you tasted it, it tastes like table salt. Uh-oh, Houston. We might have a problem. This might not be 
Okay, going to work out the way I was hoping it was going to work out. So my plan is not going to work. So we're back to, how am I going to get that freaking bolt out of there? What were you trying to do? Well, I was hoping that this was a spacer and it would come off, but it's not. It's part of the engine. So now we're going to try again to heat this up. Let's try this again. Ah, got it. Well, it stripped off a bunch of metal. Now it's just spinning it, yeah. spinning the threads off. You can have to trailer it somewhere. I might have to take it to the shop. It's not turning, it's just cutting, it's just cutting metal now. Man, that thing is in there. <laughs> you guys got any ideas? <laughs> I mean, I know I could grind that flush, drill it and put an easy out in there. The only thing, if I can't get it out with heat and peening on it like this, and that vice grips, which is super tight. It's so tight, it's actually cutting the metal off of it. If it won't come out doing that, I know what's gonna happen if I cut that off. What do you think is gonna happen? I'm gonna put that easy out in there, which is tool steel, and you know what's gonna happen? You know what's gonna happen. It's gonna break off in there. Then I have a stuck bolt with a broken piece of tool steel in it that now I really have problems, because then you have to take like a carbide bit and a little Dremel and sit there and grind out that tool steel. So I really don't want to do that. I guess I'm going to have to call the owner and see if he wants me to take the boat with his expired trailer <laughs> plates to the machine shop and see if they can do something with it. I don't think this is going to work, but I just drove a socket on there. I'm pretty sure it's just going to spin. Yeah, I'm going to spray some more coil on it and just let it dwell and soak. I don't think it's going to do any good. All right, I'm going to go put my tools away. I'm going to wait to talk to Eric to see what he wants to do. So I texted him. I haven't heard from him. I'm guessing he's busy. Do you guys want to see more of stuff like this? Big boat. Just sitting right here at the dock. We see those all the time, but some of you might enjoy seeing more of them. Let us know. I look forward to hearing from you. If you've liked this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up and watch that next video that's coming right up after this. We've got something in store for you guys. Until next time, bye for now.